The Gretsch Electromatic Solid Body Model Numbers can sometimes be a bit confusing. Luckily, after a lot of experience, I think I can shed a little light on the differences and hopefully this will help you make a more educated decision. In the Gretsch Electromatic Solid Body Guitars, which by the way, they really aren't solid body guitars, that's the first thing that's confusing. They're actually chambered body guitars. You can't really tell because there's no F holes or sound holes, but these guitars are closer to a semi-acoustic than a solid body. The construction is similar to a Rickenbacker, where they take a solid piece of wood and carve out the body around the perimeter, leaving a solid center. It gives these guitars an acoustic resonance that really appeals to me. A lot of times I'll play my guitar without the amp, and acoustically these guitars have a very pleasing tone. So they're really not solid body guitars, but for the purpose of this video, I'll just refer to them as a solid body. You get it. Okay, here's the breakdown of the solid or chambered body electromatic series, and I'll try to keep this simple. First off, there's the single cut and the double cut, or in Gretsch terms, the jet and the double jet. The single cut Les Paul shape model is the G5220. Add the Bigsby vibrato and it becomes a G5230T. The double cut model is the G5222. Add the Bigsby vibrato and it's the model G5232T. I'm already getting tied tongue. I understand the numbering system they use, but for some reason it's still confusing. There's too many twos flying around, I guess. Or you might think of the model numbers as just add 10 and a T to get a tremolo. No, never mind, that's even more confusing. Even though the shape of these guitars is similar to a Les Paul body, it's actually a bit bigger. It's hard to see side by side, but the Gretsch guitars have a larger body than a Gibson, Epiphone, or most other Les Paul style guitars. When you hold it or hang it from your shoulder with a strap, you can feel the larger size. That's just Gretsch. They like big guitars. Even Harrison was dwarfed by that country gentleman. You would think that these guitars are pretty much the same, but they're not. There are actually several differences between the two basic models. The biggest difference is the shape of the necks. At first glance, the specs look the same. They're all listed as a thin U-shape, 22 medium jumbo frets, 24.6 inch scale, and a 12 inch radius. But look closely at the specs and you'll see that the nut width is wider on the 5220, 1.6875 inches. The nut width on the double cut 5222 is 1.685 inches. It doesn't even seem possible that this could make any difference, but I can tell you from playing both these guitars that the necks are completely different. The neck on the 5220 is wide and thin. It's wider across the fretboard and has less depth from top to bottom than any of the other electromatic solid body models. For me, this neck is perfect because my chunky fingers have more room to separate and I can play cleaner chords with less unwanted muting of adjacent strings. The slimmer profile makes it easier for me to grab and get around on, so this is my favorite neck out of all my guitars. The neck on the 5230T, which is the same guitar with a Bigsby tremolo, has a completely different neck shape. In fact, all the other guitars in this series, including the double cut 5222 and the 5232T, have narrower and thicker necks. Some people like a bigger neck, so this would be a better choice if you like more wood in your hands. Nope, not going there. To add to the confusion, the Gretsch website lists the 5232T, which is the double cut with the vibrato, as having the same wide neck nut as the 5220. From my experience playing all these models, I can tell you this is incorrect. It may be a typo on the Gretsch specs, or it may be that the necks coming from the factory overseas have changed specs in different runs. Just be aware that the necks are not the same across the Electromatic series, and the difference in the neck shape is significant. The 5220 is wide and thin, and the other guitars are more narrow and thicker. Oh, and one more little caveat. Somewhere this year, Gretsch has changed the fretboard wood on these guitars from dark walnut to laurel. It's not consistent which guitars have what, 
so it's best you get them in your hands or if you're buying online just make sure you get pictures of the actual guitar you're buying beforehand it's pretty easy to see the difference the dark walnut is darker and the laurel is lighter in color which is better it doesn't really make any difference but i can tell you that the dark walnut looks like ebony and for me i prefer this look and feel but if you like a rosewood fretboard you might prefer the color and the texture of the laurel the appointments on these guitars are a little different too the tuners on the 5220 have smaller grover style buttons and the 5222 have a little larger more rectangular button i think they're basically the same machine head the buttons just have a different design the other difference between the guitars is the fretboard markers the 5220 and the 5230t have big block inlays and the 5222 and the 5233t have the neoclassic thumbnail markers so that's it hopefully that'll help you better understand the electromatic series of numbering and give you a little more information about the difference between the models i did talk to a gretsch representative and i tried to get to the bottom of the inconsistencies but i had no luck because these guitars are produced overseas, it's hard to get information about specifics. So again, it's a good idea if you're buying online to try to get pictures and find out as much as you can about the exact guitar you're buying before you make a purchase. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please check out my music online. Just search Brooks Reed and you'll find tons of stuff.